Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Being Abroad. I'm your host Awa Dembele and I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Guys, the semester is coming to an end and senior writers is honestly kicking in. Like I feel like I'm at a point where I'm just like please let me take my exams, let me take my finals and please let me leave. I'm ready to go. <laughs> I'm ready to go. And while we're even on that topic of finals, I definitely would like to wish everyone, you know, good luck on your finals, good luck on your end of the year plans. I will also like to give a big shout out to the class that is graduating in December. Shout out to you guys. Congratulations. Good luck on your future endeavors. And yeah, you know, big things to celebrate this semester. But before we jump into today's episode, let me give you guys a little background about this person that's coming up. This person that's coming up was the first person I met in Heart Hall. And even off the rip of me meeting her and asking her how was her summer, off the rip she was already on a study abroad experience. She was telling me about her experience and like from that moment, she's to me, she's always been the face of study abroad. Like when I think of study abroad, this person's face comes up and this person in in herself has also been very influential in my own study abroad experience and me even deciding to even study abroad if I'm being honest. So you know, she's definitely been changing a lot of lives, including mine, and I honestly can't wait for you guys to hear her story. But before we get into today's episode, I would like to remind you guys that if you have any study abroad questions, or if you have like any study abroad plans, figuring out where you want to go, figuring out if you even want to go, figuring out which program is best for you, definitely reach out to the study abroad office. Go to our website at asuego.edu slash international. And you can also chat with us via our social medias on YouTube, Facebook, and even Instagram at Asuego Abroad. So without further ado, let's dive into today's video. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. So before we jump into today's episode, I would love for my guest to introduce herself. Hi, my name is Fadi Gay. I graduated May 2021. I studied abroad to Nisa, France 2018, and I studied to Benin, West Africa, January 2020. Sheesh, sheesh, sheesh. Can you share your identities with us? So um, I'm a young Black African-American woman, and um, I'm also sending goodies. Period, period. We got Africa in the building. <laughs> um, but yeah, so the next question I would like to ask you is, why did you decide to travel to the countries that you chose? So I decided to study abroad to France my freshman, well, right after my freshman year, because one, I've always wanted to go to France. Why not France? Um, and originally I wanted to go to Paris because when I... When anybody thinks of France, they automatically think of Paris. Like nobody goes to Lyon or nobody goes to Nice or anything like that. Right. But the program that they had available at Nice was to study French. And that's what I wanted to do. And in Paris, they had like a business program. And I'm not into business. I'm, mm-hmm. My passion is in medicine. So I decided to, you know, take that initiative and apply to the program in Nice. And I decided to study abroad to Benin, West Africa, because I feel like a lot of students choose not to go to Africa. They always decide to go to Europe, you know, just like how I was freshman year when I wanted to study about it, automatically thought of France and like trying to go to Europe. Honestly, I just wanted to go to Benin, West Africa because I wanted to put myself in an uncomfortable position to grow. Like in life, you know, we have to learn how to, you know, get out of our comfort zones and Right. For someone that was born and raised in a Senegalese household, you know, like I speak well of and I understand, you know, the Senegalese culture, but like, I don't know anything. I don't know much about other African cultures. Like in SUNY, Os- in SUNY Oswego, there's a lot of Senegalese. I mean, there's a lot of Nigerian and Ghanaian people. So I decided to study abroad to Benin, West Africa, because I wanted to learn more about the culture. Now, yeah, I really, I love that. I really do love that because, you know, you, I definitely also come from, you know, an African background myself and I haven't even been to my own country yet, you know, but I've been to Ghana. So I definitely do understand that whole, you know, getting outside of your comfort zone and wanting to explore other 
African countries and um we will definitely be tapping back into your comfort zone. Um, that discussion about, you know, you getting outside of your comfort zone. But I really wanted to kind of ask like just a typical question that a lot of people are, are very curious about is really just the process of studying abroad. Because not only did you do one study abroad, you actually did two. So um, can you just give a background as to the process of you applying to go to Nice, France, and, you know, a little bit about the process of you applying to go to Benin and, you know, with were there any challenges that you may have faced during these process or was it, you know, really just smooth sailing? Um, it wasn't as complicated, to be honest. Freshman year, honestly, I just got out of class and I was told that the study abroad office is in Sheldon, room 100. So I, I, I don't know anything about studying abroad. I just know that I wanted to travel. So I went in, you know, around like the end of March, And I went in and I asked about, you know, I wanted to know if I could see a counselor or like a program coordinator or someone, you know, that I could talk to about studying abroad because I knew I wanted to study abroad. Mm -hmm. And I met a girl and I spoke to Kelsey and she gave me like a form and she was telling me about like, you know, different Q1 programs, Q2 programs, Q3 programs. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about it. But after a while, we sat down, had several meetings, and I decided that I want to study abroad to Nice, to Nice and France. And then I met with a financial aid counselor. And from there, you know, things started rolling. It wasn't it wasn't as complicated. I had to write like a paragraph or two of why I want to study abroad. And I just had several meetings after that. And then, boom, I was on my way to studying abroad. So when I studied abroad to Benin, the process was a bit more complicated because I was going with the group. Unlike when I studied abroad to France, I was staying by myself. So as I was taking the class, I was told that I had to take the yellow fever shot um, prior to going to Benin. And I was told that I would have two bottles of water to you know, to take a shower and to drink and Mm. to brush my teeth with. And on top of that, I was told that, you know, there might be days where I might not have any connection or I might not be able to contact my family. So I was a bit worried and I was scared, you know, for someone like me who's constantly like on my phone or like I'm dependent on Wi-Fi and connection and my LTE data because I'm Mm. constantly, you know, dependent on technology. Yeah. Um, I was a bit worried, you know. And then another thing I was told that, I might have parasites in my stomach when I come back because of the food there and how different it is and how I might come back, you know, sick. And I have to get like malaria pills because malaria is a big thing over there. So for someone who hasn't been in Africa, you know, for 16 years, I was, I was, I was frightened because when I went to Senegal, I didn't have, I wasn't told all of this, you know, I just went when I was young and I had a blast. So going to Benin, I was a bit scared and um, I was told about the voodoo festival. And mm-hmm. at the time I wasn't as open-minded. Um, so when I, when I, when I heard of voodoo, I automatically thought of the worst, you know, evil spirits. Yeah. So I was extremely concerned and worried and I was contemplating whether I want to go on this trip or not. But throughout the process, it was complicated because there was a lot of things we had to do and prepare ahead of time. But other than that, it was fine. Okay, yeah, that's that's actually I like that. Um, you know, even though you kind of had your second guessing, you definitely still went through it because it just shows just the support that you have at hand. And I feel like that's one thing that a lot of students are concerned about is rather they're going to be safe or, you know, who's going to be like there to help them in regards to that. So I kind of got I we kind of got an idea of how it was for your Benin. But um, how was it in terms of like France? Because, you know, you talked about the process to get into France, but while you were in France, would you say that you got the same support? And also the, a lot of the people here on this podcast is very familiar with the Kappa program. A lot of the alumni have a lot of the recent alumni in these past episodes have all gone through the CAPA program. So did you go through a similar program and how was your support once you got to France? Um, the support system was great, to be honest. No, I didn't go through CAPA. Is it CAPA? CAPA. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I didn't go through CAPA. So once I got out the airport, I forgot her name, which is terrible. But this lady came. She's so sweet. She came and picked me up at the airport. And she kind of gave me like a little tour of Nice, you know, around the area and where I'll be staying. So I had my own studio apartment there. Mm -hmm. And there were like two, three other SUNY students. One 
there actually there was four, including myself. There was one from Binghamton and two from SUNY Buffalo. And yeah, you know, she introduced us there. And then after that, you know, she showed us where the school is and the school was literally like down the block from our apartments. And every day, you know, she booked a reservation for us at this restaurant. So all we had to do was go in, you know, order what we wanted and like she'll pay for it. And then like, you know, we'll go around and do what we want to do for that, you know, for the the rest of the day or for like the rest of the trip. And we met up with her, you know, once a week over dinner. And, you know, we would just sit down and talk and she would ask us if we had any concerns. She gave us her phone number Mm -hmm. and everything was cool. So I felt like, I didn't feel like I was being babied, you know, because at the time I was 18 years old. I wanted to explore. I wanted to have fun. You mm-hmm. know, I didn't want like grandma coming along with me everywhere. But at the same time, mm-hmm. I felt safe because like she she let me know like where to go and where not to go. Yeah. And she made sure everything was booked ahead of time. You know, she was very professional and mm-hmm. loving all at once. So everything was cool. That's good. That's good. That's, that was a, a really good response, especially to... um something that a lot of students are concerned about and I can definitely agree comparing just like just to add in my own experience I definitely would say that in these study abroad programs like they're not sending you people a lot of people think they're just gonna put you on the plane just send you to another country and that's it like you just gotta find yeah. around like it's nothing like that like you have your um advisor here at SUNY Aswig who's going to help you and you have your advisor while you're abroad. So you literally have two people that you can literally rely on whenever you need help or whenever you need guidance. Um, So definitely thank you for um, sharing that. And then of course, my next question is going to be that being that you have participated in two study abroad programs, a lot of people have this idea that studying abroad is very, very expensive. And even as much as I tell people, you know, like there are study abroad programs that when it comes to price, it doesn't even compare to how much you even pay to go in Oswego. A lot of people, you know, they find that very hard to believe. But you being somebody who has not even, like not only did you go on one study abroad trip, but you went on two. So in terms of just being able to finance both of those trips, um, can you give a little bit of advice or a little bit of guidance to people who think study abroad is, you know, too expensive? Yes, yes. Um, And I would like to start off by, quote. Like the only limitations that we have are those that we set up in our minds. And that's a quote by mm-hmm. Bob Proctor. Mm-hmm. And it was also written in a book called Think and Grow Rich, which I highly recommend by Napoleon yes, Hill. Yes. It's, I highly recommend it. And it's like if you constantly tell yourself that something's expensive and you constantly tell yourself that you can't do it, like your brain is just going to grasp that information and you would automatically assume that you can't do it. Like the mm-hmm. brain cannot distinguish false negative and positive, you know, um, thoughts. So like when I studied abroad to Benin, right at the moment, if anything, I had a bill to pay from the school, mind you to study abroad. It was a whole nother $3,000. Did I have the $3,000? No. Could I pay my bill at the time? No. But did I still apply to go to Benin? Yes. But at the moment I was, you know, just trying to be like optimistic. And I was like, you know what? You can do it. You can do it. And I applied for every little scholarship that I could. And I'm sure you've heard of the get go scholarship. I'm sure like throughout the past um, podcast that there was some students that mentioned the get go because yeah. once you apply for the get go, there's, there's practically a 99% chance that you're going to get Good. some sort of money from them. Yeah. And honestly, I went to the financial aid office. The financial aid office would be your best friend. Mm. Go there and no matter what, there's a little bit of money out there in the world what, within the school. <laughs> so, yeah, I applied and Elizabeth helped me and, you know, she was able to help me get some financial aid out to, you know, to, so I, I could pay for the trip mm-hmm. and I applied for a few scholarships throughout the study abroad office. And a lot of students don't, you know, study abroad. So they have a whole bunch of scholarship and they have all this free money out there yeah. because students automatically assume that, you know, study abroad is too expensive. So you never know until you actually apply. So with applying to Benin, to Benin, eventually I was able to pay off my bill and go on the trip, obviously, because, you know, I went to Benin, but right. in the beginning, I could you not like in October, I was being real brave applying, knowing that I had a bill and this trip was three thousand dollars plus spending mm-hmm. money you know what i mean but mm-hmm. i was able to make it work no that's good and um are you part of the eop program yes 
Oh, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about how that had also maybe contributed to you being able to study abroad or the benefits of being a part of EOP and study abroad? Yeah, so the EOP program pays for your fee to study abroad. Um, I believe it's the application fee Mm -hmm. that you have to pay for. So that's already covered, you know. You just email them, email the EOP office and you let them know that you want to study abroad. So that's already one fee already covered for you, your EOP. You know what I mean? So like, you don't know all this until you actually apply pressure, you do it. So once I applied and did the application, I had to look through any means and any little, you know, hole to try to find money. So, yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Because, you know, a lot, like I said, a lot of students just think it's so expensive to study abroad, but it's just like, bro, there's so many different programs that you can just leverage. Um, And even if you go to the study abroad program, like, don't get me wrong, there are some programs that are are expensive, you know, to like the typical cities and stuff like that. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, the UK, Italy and stuff like some of those trips are expensive because they're like overpopulated with a lot of study abroad students. However, there are programs that you can leverage, like programs in Japan. I know like South Korea has a really good program that's, in terms mm-hmm. of tuition, it's not even close to how much you pay at Oswego. Way cheaper than Oswego. Um, and if anything, you're getting money back from the back, school because yeah. their tuition is so cheaper. Yeah. And that also like includes like the Czech Republic, Hungary, Germany. And then of course, like, you know, you're definitely not just limited to Oswego schools. Um, Oswego study abroad offers you're also, you know, you can also leverage other study offers. So it's definitely a win-win. Like you can't, I, I, like for, if I'm being honest, you really can't lose when it comes to study abroad. You really can't lose. Um, let me see. Okay, cool. So then my next question I want to dive into is one thing about your experience. I mean, not even your experience, but just your um, background in terms of what you studied in school. Um, you were in the STEM major department, right? So you yeah. the STEM. And I know a lot of STEM people believe like they cannot study abroad. Like it's no way for them to study abroad because of, you know, the amount of classes and labs that they have to be present for. So mm-hmm. what your advice be to students who are in the STEM major um, who are very hesitant about, you know, falling behind on these classes and not being able to, you know, fulfill the requirement because they want to study abroad? So depending on which country and which program you want to study abroad to. So when I studied abroad to Benin, West Africa, I wanted to get some sort of clinical hours, you know, because I want to become a pediatric physician assistant. And As I went to Benin, I was able to get some clinical hours and work with some surgeons in the hospital. And my friend um, who came along with me, she wants to become a doctor. So we went together, you know, to Benin and we were able to shadow a few surgeons for a couple of days. And it was amazing. But that counted as a three credit um, course for my internship. So if you're a wellness management major, you know, that right there covers your three credits of getting your internship and get that being covered or if you're a STEM major and you need some clinical hours you know if you need something like that and some experience that's one thing right there and also please 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 contact your teachers and your professors because you can study abroad and your teacher can sign off on it and that could count as one of your labs or one of your you know your science courses so you never know until you contact don't just assume because you go on degree works you know like that's the only way out and that's the only way to get those credits covered you never know until you contact the professor itself and contact the program that you want to you know study abroad to to see if that could be covered Wow. Yeah. I love that you added this last part of just asking because that seems to be a lot of the um, advice that, you know, us people who have studied abroad, you know, mention to people who want to, because a lot of people don't mm-hmm. realize that if they ask qu- the right questions. Like a lot of like even in I think in life in general, if you ask the right questions, I think a lot of things are yeah. like <laughs> it would be so easy. People just don't ask questions. And when it comes to study abroad, even if you're curious about it, just ask all your questions. Ask the things right. that are bothering you, because nine times out of ten, they were bothering another student and they got the oh. answer they needed. So. Right. Yeah, definitely just ask the right questions. Like, just ask. If you need extra funding, ask where you can go get that extra funding, you know? If you're a STEM major, you know, ask, you know? 
And that's, that's I, I like that you mentioned that because I didn't even know that part about how like sometimes your professors can, you know, sign off. Sign off. Yeah. God, and it'll count towards your lab. So that's that's some tea right here for y'all. Ten majors. Who- One thing about me is I'm like really hard headed and I don't like taking no for an answer. So like and once my professor said that, no, that there's no way that he could do it. OK, why isn't there a way like right. what's stopping it? And if you know, let, let's let say like they don't have the right equipment. So what is the right equipment? How can I get that right equipment, you know, in Benin, West Africa to see how can we make it work? Or maybe could you call the surgeon there to see like, like, you know, I, I just don't take no for an answer. You never know until you keep asking, like, just don't give up. And if one professor says no, go to the next. That's you know a, what I mean? That's a fact. Because people tend to say no because it's just the easier response. Yeah, and exactly. Students just don't, especially, you know, like the power dynamic between professors and students is like people don't question a professor, but, you know. Sometimes you got to ask why. <laughs> yeah, ask why. That's a fact. But yeah, having on like just always asking a question. So definitely thank you for sharing that because not only, I just learned something new and I'm pretty sure a lot of people who are listening to this and who are, who may be in the STEM major or planning on, you know, going into the STEM major, um, this is that was a really really good um, that was really good information to share with them. Um, so then, I, my next question would really be in terms of the language barrier because you went to two countries where English is not the dominant language. You know, we have France. You know, it's French, and then of course, and um, Benin I believe it's French as well. So mm-hmm. you went to two French speaking countries. So can you talk a little bit about how? Um, how the like how the language barrier was. So as I mentioned, when I studied abroad to Nice, France, I just completed my freshman year. Um, I also mentioned I'm Senegalese, so we speak well of, mm-hmm. right? I speak no French, like I don't speak French at all. Like before I even went to France, it was a struggle for me to say bonjour correctly. Like my French was terrible. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, after taking a few classes, you know. In French, it was a struggle. I'm not going to lie. It was a struggle. And it was sad because, one, I'm 5'11", so I'm extremely tall. I stand out. Literally. Yeah. I stand out. You know what I mean? <laughs> and yeah. I speak no French. I'm 18 years old, so I'm grown. And it, it sucked that I wasn't able to articulate myself the best, right. you know, the best that I wanted to. And right. when I went out to like supermarkets and I wanted to get some things and they would look at me and I would look at them and we'll have a staring contest, you know, they didn't understand. And I couldn't articulate myself the best that I wanted to. And it was hard for me to use Google translate because over there in France, they use orange. That's their whole, like, you know, landline over there. Mm-hmm. So after like the first two or three weeks, you know, the French got a little better. So when I went to the supermarket, I'll be like formage. And they were like, yeah, they'll point to the yeah. key section, you know, so I was able to like, mm-hmm. put, you know, words together. And after like a month, I was able to get like little baby sentences. But in the beginning, it, it was it sucked that I was able that I wasn't able to articulate myself as much as I wanted to. Yeah. Coming back to like the United States and coming back to SUNY Oswego. And I was able to like, you know, speak English and talk to my professors in English. It felt so good because I was like, dang, I could articulate myself as much as I can. And I went to a country where I couldn't talk, you know, I couldn't articulate myself as much as I wanted to. And I was able to navigate and, you know, explore Nice and go to freaking Italy, you know, and Monaco by myself Mm -hmm. without me even speaking a language. So if I could do that without being able to speak, you know, the native language there, imagine me in my native tongue in the country like you know there's nothing that I can't I can't do because now I can talk for myself I can articulate for myself you know what I mean so like my confidence definitely increased when I came back yeah I can I can definitely agree with that all the way um you know I went to the Czech Republic where you know it's a student town like I was in Beno it was it's a student town so a lot of people did speak English however you know going to you know grocery stores where it's a lot of older people it definitely was you know different in terms of you know just being able to articulate yourself but I feel like it definitely did build my confidence and stuff because I mean like I lived in a country for like four months and I was able to get through that so and, you know coming back to the states it definitely I would definitely say I I agree 100% with the um it being able to like just build your confidence. 
And this kind of like just goes into like my next question where you talked about like just getting outside of your comfort zone. Um, can you share an experience from both of your trip that kind of pushed you to get outside of your comfort zone? Like, was there an experience or something that you can recall that was like, wow, OK, yeah, this is definitely me getting outside of my comfort zone. This is something I'm trying. That's very new. Yes, yes. When I went to Benin, like I told you, I was contemplating for so long whether I should go on this trip or not. You know, a lot of my family members were telling me not to go, you know, and how I should just stay home or just wait till I go back to Senegal. But I was mostly afraid of the voodoo festival. So I grew up watching a lot of Nigerian movies and like mm-hmm. they will always talk about voodoo there. And mm-hmm. the way um, voodoo was shown in Nigerian movies is not usually the positive side is usually something negative and like spirits yeah. and like trying to get revenge on someone. So my professor told me that we're going to a voodoo festival and I'm like, hold on, what you mean? Yeah. And she's like, yeah, we're going to go to a voodoo festival. Like, it's okay. She was like, you know, there'll be like spirits around and stuff. And I'm like, spirits, you know, like ever since I was young, I always had a fear of like spirits, ghosts. I was never one of those little girls that went into the mirror and did the whole Buddy Mary thing that just wasn't me. (laughs) So I was extremely scared. Like that was a huge fear. But I was just telling myself, like, you know, you never know. Like if they're having a voodoo festival, I'm pretty sure it's not something bad. Like if a lot of people all around the world come here, I'm sure that they're not here to like, to, to hurt themselves, you know what right. I mean? So that's that was what I was telling myself to make myself feel better. Right. So we go to the Voodoo Festival. Mind you, I'm reciting surahs from the Quran. I'm like, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, alhamdulillah, me. Like going there, you know, as I'm like trying to, you know, keep myself positive. So I'm like having so much like internal conflicts at the moment. But when I went there and I saw like, you know, people with go- covered in gold and like the African clothing, Mm-hmm. and like people do you know spiritual dances and stuff so i'm like all right this is the food festival like right it's like a parade like come on right. you know what i mean but then after a while like um i will see people like sprinkling like holy water and like different liquids out there i wasn't sure what the liquids were but i wasn't going too close to it because i still wasn't sure right. you know what i mean i was still a bit scared but i was glad that i was able to attend the voodoo festival and learn that you know there were positive aspects to like voodoo you know what i mean when people think of voodoo they automatically think of you know witches and like spells and stuff like that right. and trying to do black magic and with them it's the total opposite it's them using you know natural herbs using earth water air and what's the last thing fire Fire, you know to i forgot yeah to like to establish something beautiful basically and Mm. it was it was so it was like it was so different from what i what i assumed you know and what was shown to me through the media when Mm. i research or when i look at voodoo you know what i mean yeah so that was one thing you know that definitely got me out of my comfort zone for sure Mm-hmm. I was scared to sleep the night before going to that. And he said yeah, that, you know, I'm, nobody could stay at the hotel. So when I studied abroad to France, one thing that I've done, well, I did a lot of things getting out of my comfort zone. But one thing that really stood out to me was when I went to Monaco by myself. Um, at least when I went to France, I forgot her name, but, you know, let's just refer to her as the old lady that was there. You know, she was there and she was like, you know, at least like a 10 minute drive away. So I always knew she was there, but I decided to go to Monaco on my own, you know, and in Monaco, if something happens to me there. Like, um, it's, it's on me. Like no one's, you know, liable for that. Right. So that was one thing that I was scared. Mind you, in the beginning, like I said, I was struggling to, you know, articulate for myself. Mm-hmm. So that was one thing, but you know, that was, that was one fear that I was able to, you know, accomplish so that that's one thing and getting out of my comfort zone and just doing a little solo weekend trip by myself. Right. Wow, that's so, yeah. Yeah, that's really, really good. I feel like with these study abroad, you know, definitely let me know if you agree or not. I feel like when you do these study abroad, this no matter how long your trip is or where you go, you definitely come back with just 
something that you've learned about yourself, you know? Like you learn something new about yourself when you go out there. Um, you just prove a lot of things wrong, you know, prove a lot of things that mm-hmm. else that you have extremely wrong. Like what would you say from your experience, you coming back to the States? I know you talked about how your confidence has definitely boosted, but um, you coming back to the States after your trips, would you, how else would you say you have changed? Um... I feel like I became way more open-minded mm. and honestly, I feel like I have a traveling addiction problem. I feel like it's like the, the best analogy that I could give you is like, you know, when you're young and you're like in kindergarten, first grade, and you have like the basic coloring um, crayon pack, you have like yellow, green, blue, you know, and yeah. whatever. And then someone comes in with like, the big 48 packet of crayons and you see violet, baby blue. And you're like, oh, hold on. Like there's all these colors going on. Right. So, like in the beginning, all I knew was like New York. You know what I mean? Like the United mm-hmm. States. I knew there was California, whatever. But then when I went to France, I'm like, oh my gosh, like the ocean is so blue. This is nothing compared to like Orchard Beach in the Bronx. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. And like the food right. is, is different. Like it's just so much better and like you see all these beautiful palettes you know that are out there in the world and all these beautiful cultures right. and the language and everything like that and after a while you just want to go explore you just want to explore more and more and more and you see like there's so much more than what you than what meets the eye and what you read in textbooks and what you're surrounded by like the world is too big not to travel so like that's one thing that I feel like really changed me just wanting to learn more and like being addicted to traveling like during the whole COVID pandemic, it was just sad not being able to like travel, but you know, we had to do what was best. Right. Not yet. I think you definitely did take the words right out as well. Um, I would definitely agree that, you know, yeah, traveling has become an addiction. I would definitely say that. Um, like one thing I always say, and you know, I honestly shouldn't manifest this stuff into my life, but I will always say like, I will go broke when it comes to travel like I would spend my last if it means I'm going to a different country or I'm getting out of the states um yeah I could definitely agree with that in regards to just like just changing your whole perspective about everything and just getting out there but I and I love your analogy with the crayons I'm gonna start using that I'm not even gonna lie (laughs) that's honestly I feel like that's the best way like when I went and I saw like the the, Med- the Mediterranean Sea, like I was just like, oh my gosh, like how could the water be this blue? Like it's turquoise. And I felt like a baby again. Nah. Nice. Like, beautiful. I felt that for sure. I love that analogy so much. I love that. Um so then I guess my last question would honestly be is, and this is like the, the last question I usually ask everybody is, you know, in regards to somebody who's struggling or, you know, not even struggling, but, you know, thinking about study abroad or, you know, have ideas on studying abroad, but aren't sure if they really, really want to, you know, what advice would you, what advice would you give to them? Because, you know, a lot of people just say, just do it. And, you know, they just think we just all just yeah. the same thing. Like, oh, just do it. Like Nike, you know, like, no, like it's honestly just do it. I was just about to say that. I knew it. Outside of just do it, you know, what other what advice can you give to somebody else who are who may be going through some of the concerns you had before you studied abroad? Like what advice would you give to them? I would say you can't keep living your life in fear or you can't keep living your life in a what if. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure when you first came to SUNY Oswego as a freshman, you were kind of scared, you know, to go out to different places on your own. But you just you just never know until you do it. And in life, we're all going to grow at some point. And like, how could you grow if you keep standing in one spot, you mm. know? And the best way to get out of your comfort zone is, you know, the, the special quote that I don't want to say, but it's for you to do it. It's for you to do it. But like, you know, I'm sure that you're in college right now and you're in a point in your life where you actually have the, the study abroad office out there to guide you. You have cast cast. But I keep mixing Kappa with Caspa. Caspa is a whole nother website for PA mm-hmm. students. Um, and you have a whole bunch of people out there to support you. So like, if this is your first time traveling, you have a whole bunch of guidance out there. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? 
and then once you do that and you feel comfortable and you know that you did this on your own, I'm sure at some point you will want to travel, you know, on your own or with your group of friends and you won't be as scared because you've done it before. You know what I mean? And if anything, like you have people who are there to support you and people who've done it before. So at the, the only thing that I can say is just don't be, just don't let your fear stop you. Right. No, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much, Fadi, for, you know, your quotes, your analogy. Um, definitely amazing to hear it all over again. Um, and definitely thank you for just to, for just plugging into the episode and, again, just sharing your experience with everyone. I'm pretty sure a lot of – I learned some new things. I'm pretty sure everybody else who's listening has also learned a lot. Um so yeah, thank you so much, Fadi. And thank you guys for tuning into this week's episode. Make sure to tune into the next episode. The next episode is gonna be a little bit, a little bit different. You know, we're switching things up just a little bit. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Got a lot of information. Again, if you guys have any question about study abroad or even about Fadi's experience, um, definitely reach out to the study abroad office and we'll definitely connect you with um, the information that you need. So again, thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you guys on next week's episode. Bye. Thank you.